but let's think more kind of ambitiously downrange 2050 kind of how are these trends going to take shape converge and create really potentially very alternative futures that these uh, senior leaders need to be able to grapple with welcome to ag bioscience the number one podcast in the world for innovation in food animal health plant science ag tech and agriculture here is your host agrinovis ceo mitch frazier Welcome back to the Ag Bioscience Podcast. Driving growth in any business is critical, but driving growth for growth's sake is not durable. Durable growth requires uniquely identifying a problem and providing a solution. A team of researchers just dug into Indiana's Ag Bioscience economy to identify the unique opportunities, the problems to be solved, and a senior researcher joins us today to unpack that research and give us some insight into what's ahead in the ag bioscience economy. Welcome, Amanda Rose, Agri-Food Systems Lead at Research Juggernaut, RTI. Amanda, welcome to the Ag Bioscience Podcast. Hi, Mitch. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. This research just out. Uh, we have to start, though, Amanda, before we dig into Indiana, before we dig into the unique opportunities Let's first start with what is the ag bioscience economy and what do you see in globally as some of these big opportunities that are emerging? Absolutely. Well, I think you all describe it really well on the podcast. Um, I hear you saying it's kind of at the intersection of agriculture, the life science industry, and advanced technology development. So I think that's a great place to start in our understanding of the ag bioscience economy. And Agronovis has also defined five key platforms that really comprise the ag bioscience economy. And those are agricultural production, plant science and crop protection, animal health and nutrition, value-added food, and agricultural technology and equipment, otherwise known as ag tech. And so that's really what we understand to be the ag bioscience economy and those five key platforms that underpin it. So when we think about what's happening globally, what's driving growth, I think we can't get away from the fact that, you know, the ag bioscience economy is really trying to help contribute to feeding a growing global population amidst a lot of different constraints and different forces that are playing into how that happens globally. But we can also look within the platforms to see that there are other types of drivers of growth and also limitations. I think we have to kind of be realistic. It's not all upside. There are limitations that come along with the the drivers of growth. So we see in plant science and crop protection, there's a lot of mergers and acquisitions, consolidation in the industry that's been happening. We see in animal health and nutrition, a real boom globally in the companion animal space and what that means for the industry. We see in ag tech kind of a move to digital and automation amidst pretty tight labor markets and other constraints. So while we can think about the ag bioscience economy in the aggregate, we can also start to kind of unpack it at that platform level. Amanda, you have such a unique perspective. RTI, I call you a juggernaut. I don't know of a different way to describe what RTI is. You yourself, a deep expert in ag bioscience and really understanding the inputs and outputs, the puts and calls into the system. You've been doing this for 15 years. How have you seen this market evolve? And does that give us any perspective on maybe what's ahead? Absolutely. So, you know, beyond kind of some of the factors that we've already started to dig into, I think there are three real trends, changes Mm. that are taking shape that maybe are worth putting out there um, early in our conversation. So the first is around consumer preferences. I think we we kind of have seen generally a kind of an awakening to consumers really demanding for new more nutritious food options, ingredients, um, really wanting to understand like where is my food coming from, wanting to have more transparency in the food chain and the food system. So that's one piece that is really driving um, large food and bev com- companies to do things differently. I think another one that um, is probably worth stating is around environmental sustainability and certainly in the the context of near-term weather variability and long-term climate change, there's a lot happening within the agri-food system that folks are really kind of saying like, 
how do we continue to produce at this level while also kind of dealing with the constraints around natural resource management and environmental sustainability? So you see large food and bev companies and others kind of reaching back into their supply chains, really encouraging more regenerative ag practices, moving away from really um, kind of traditional plastics um, as packaging, looking for alternatives. So we see movement there. And then a third that we can't not mention, though I'm sure it gets talked about a lot um, within this podcast, are those technological advances that are really starting to take shape. There's still a lot of uncertainty, but two that come to mind are gene editing and artificial intelligence. There's so much happening within those domains, the cross-section of those technological advances. Um, we saw that come through our research and our process with Agronovus, um, but we can't not mention those two important technologies that are shaping the ag bioscience landscape right now. Yeah, incredible forces of change, undoubtedly, and it's been fun. I mean, you and I and the team have spent the last nine months. Yeah. Uh, and I know it, it feels like just a couple of days, but it's been nine months digging into Indiana. What's unique here? What's changing? Where are the opportunities? You've had a chance to spend time with many of the leaders here in the state, whether they're big companies, small companies, government officials, really everyone engaged in the ag bioscience economy here in the state. And what I think has been really interesting about this project is We've linked arms to say, let's not just drive growth, kind of where we started this podcast. Let's not just drive growth for growth's sake. Let's drive smart growth. Let's look to the future. Let's look at, you know, pick a number, 2050, and work backward and say, okay, what what growth do we need to drive today to really get to durable, long-term, sustainable growth here in the state? You and the team identified really three big areas that you felt like, based on all the quant and qual analysis that happened, there's three things that really Indiana could do. Give us a peek into what those three things are. Absolutely. So when we started working together, we heard Agronovus and your board and other kind of ag bioscience leaders saying, we want to kind of have this intentional strategic planning process. um, And we want it to do a few things. We want it, first of all, to be participatory. We want to leverage, like you're saying, the the collective intelligence of these tremendous leaders that are here within Indiana. We also want it to be rigorous and data-backed. We want to really saturate in understanding where is Indiana bioscience right now, or ag bioscience right now, and where might it go based on kind of current trends and our understanding of how the future might take shape. And then, yes, that future element really, how do we kind of think forward, not just in a traditional strategic planning kind of timeline of three to five years, but let's think more kind of ambitiously downrange 2050, Mm -hmm. kind of how are these trends going to take shape, converge and create really potentially very alternative futures that these uh, senior leaders need to be able to grapple with. So as we kind of like pulled out of that process, one that was participatory, data-backed, and very future-focused, yes, three opportunities really did come out to the fore. The first of those is around farmer-focused innovation. I love this one. So the, in, the, the opportunity that Indiana can com- cultivate a thriving community of early adopter farmers that are partnering with ag bioscience companies, specifically early and growth stage companies, to create the ag bioscience solutions of the future. So that's one opportunity that came out um, very clearly from our work with, with you all. Secondly, is around food as health. And this is about the opportunity to bring together these different domains of plant, animal, human, and environmental health, innovate very um, intentionally at the intersection of those domains, really seeing food as the nexus, not only to drive that durable growth that you're talking about, but also to cultivate healthier outcomes via healthier food. The final opportunity that came out was really around bio-innovation mm-hmm. and bio-innovation from a full continuum perspective. So not just at the R&D level, not just at the commercialization level, not just at the scaled products, but all the way through and not just around products, but new processes and platforms to drive bio-innovation. And Indiana, your leaders and the research really showed that Indiana has assets that can really play across that, that full spectrum from early stage R&D all the way to scaled application um, within Indiana. 
Yeah, it's so it is so exciting to see the the lights come on, right? When when you when we talk about these three areas of opportunity, they're unique here to Indiana, uh, where leaders have said, "Yes, this is the thing. These are the things that we want to go chase." It's exciting to me. I think it's exciting to many others. You can find this research online right now at agronovasindiana.com slash research, agronovasindiana.com slash research. And Amanda, as you, as you think about that and you think about the conversations that we've had with leaders and with others, these are trends. I mean, the three big things, food is health, farmer-led innovation, bio-innovation, really they're universally applicable. But what was so exciting is it really emerged as the breakaway categories that the team here, this collective economy, centered on and said, these are the ones. You're a researcher. You get to do this all the time. What is it that you think really tipped those three things to the top of the entire sort list that was possible? Absolutely. Well, I think really, you know, this process tried to marry that future orientation Mm -hmm. with a real kind of clear-eyed view on the current state of ag bioscience in Indiana. And so for each of these opportunities, there are real clear reasons to believe that they make sense for Indiana that are grounded in the current state analysis that we did. So for farmer-focused innovation, we see that you know Indiana offers this um, really tremendous opportunity to co-locate um, globally recognized uh, production centers and agricultural production alongside innovation hubs some of which have global leadership and right. others that are emerging leaders. So that co-location um, for farmer-focused innovation between the agricultural production centers in Indiana and the innovation hotspots, that, that really mattered a lot to um, the leaders that were saying that this felt like an opportunity. Within food and is health, I mean, when you look across plant, animal, health, um, human, and environmental health, you again have these tremendous global leaders sitting Within Indiana, Lenco, Corteva, Purdue University as a top 10 engineering and agricultural school, um, Eli Lilly, other, other assets within Indiana that make it kind of make sense to start to think about how these um, intersections take place within um, that really kind of neat ecosystem. And then finally, within bioinnovation, I mean, goodness, you all just (laughs) received kind of (laughs) great news from the the federal government um, that you are one of 12 um, entities that were given implementation funding for the tech hub designation around biomanufacturing. Um, So that's just one example of many where Indiana is really trying to lean in to being a premier destination for biomanufacturing and bioinnovation within the state. So while, yes, these opportunities are very much linked to kind of a future orientation, they also are grounded in those existing assets that are clearly kind of at play within Indiana. One of my favorite analogies is he taking it from the balance sheet and put it on the income statement. We now have the playbook to make that leap. We'll dig into what the numbers look like right after this. The Ag Bioscience Podcast is supported by Indiana Farm Bureau. A healthy company is a blessing, but a well-insured company is a necessity. That's why Indiana Farm Bureau offers more affordable health plans for eligible members. Whether you have just a handful of employees or a larger enterprise, Building a stable business demands employees who are just as strong and healthy. Indiana Farm Bureau can help with health plans that include medical, dental, vision, and Medicare supplement insurance plans. And you can sign up for membership and apply for an Indiana Farm Bureau health plan any time of year. Indiana Farm Bureau understands the cost of health care has rapidly become one of the largest expenses for many small businesses. We invite you to compare our health plans to your current coverage. We're confident you could find significant savings. To learn more about the health plan that's right for you, visit infbhealthplans.com and make the switch today. Welcome back to the Ag Bioscience Podcast. We're talking with Amanda Rose, Agri-Food Systems Lead at RTI. Amanda, we have talked a lot about what is in this report in terms of opportunity, but this isn't all just future focus. This also takes a deep dive into quant analysis on Indiana's ag bioscience economy. Walk us through what some of those highlights are when we look at the real numbers that sit behind this ag bioscience economy here in Indiana. Terrific. Mitch would love to share some of the highlights from that analysis. 
Our team of economists within RTI did really dig into the current state of affairs for Indiana Ag Bioscience. And there's a lot more in the report that you mentioned regarding methodology and specific results that I'd really encourage interested listeners to go and, and find out more. Because today, really just want to hit kind of the, the hot sure. spots. Um, but we did find that by economic contribution, the ag bioscience economy of Indiana totaled $69 billion in 2022. It employed over 140,000 people and it generated $22 billion in gross domestic product. And our team really honed in on that metric of gross domestic product because that is, is really interesting from an economic perspective because it starts to be relatable to other industries right. and to other kind of states. So one of the things we wanted to unpack was not just kind of what, what are these figures, but, but what might these figures mean in terms of relative size and contribution vis-a-vis -vis other industries and states? So from there, we kind of looked at, well, okay, so what is the GDP contribution of ag bioscience how does that compare to other industries within Indiana? And we found that the ag bioscience industry or economy is comparable to auto manufacturing and the construction industry of Indiana. So those are That's big incredible. Of That's the a Indiana giant finding. Economy. Exactly. So ag bioscience is right in there. It's in the mix. Additionally, when you kind of look at the platforms, so we see kind of nationally that um, Indiana's economy ranks at 19th by GDP compared to the rest of the, the country. But we see that four of the ag bioscience platforms rank between seventh and 12th in the nation. And mm. so what those numbers start to say is, look, it kind of looks like ag bioscience, that economy is hitting above its weight class right. in terms of comparison with the broader Indiana GDP ranking nationally. But we know that, you know, the ag bioscience economy, it's not just about what's happening in Indiana. We know it's not just right. about what's happening in the U.S. We also have this global dimension. And so our economists dug into the global competitiveness of Indiana's ag bioscience economy. And we found that of the five ag bioscience platforms, Indiana holds a global leadership position in three, agricultural production, plant science and crop protection, and animal health and nutrition. And those are really kind of driven by the fact that Indiana is the eighth largest agricultural production state by GDP within the U.S., um, fifth largest by GDP contribution production or producer of uh, corn and soybeans and turkeys and ducks and the list goes on. Yeah. We also see that um, headquartered or Indiana headquartered companies of Corteva and Elenco, they hold global leadership positions by market share that really help position Indiana for that global leadership role alongside a lot of other companies that are important players within Indiana. So with that, you do get to kind of sense where Indiana's ag bioscience economy sits within the context of Indiana, within the context of the U.S., and then broader within the global economy. Amanda, the, the data that you just walked through, I mean, there are so many blockbuster headlines that come from it. The comparison, I love it, the comparison between ag bioscience in Indiana, roughly uh, maybe a little larger than the auto manufacturing industry from a GDP contribution standpoint here in the state. That is groundbreaking, huge. You can find all those details again in the research that Amanda's walking through, agronovisindiana.com slash research, agronovisindiana.com slash research. Uh, Amanda, you are not from Indiana. We, we met each other. You dove in. You are a researcher that gets to look at lots of different things. As, as you dug in, you and your team dug into what's here in Indiana, what surprised you? What, what were some of those things that you go, wow, that, I've not seen that before. That seems a little different. One of the things that stands out um, is really the level of engagement and investment that we saw in Agronovis' board and the ag bioscience leaders that we engaged with through this process. I think when you start a research process like this, you take a look at the website, you see names, you see faces, you kind of wonder, okay, what are these interactions gonna be like? 
And through this process, I think our whole team was impressed with the level of seriousness with which these leaders yeah. took this process, the time and the ideas that they contributed. Um, there really was a level of investment that, you know, was noteworthy through the, the process. And we have to say thank you. This was really a co-creation of work. Um, and so as much as, sure, RTI kind of contributed insights and data along the way, you know, it was very much driven by also the ideas, um, the investment, the the motivation of the, the leaders that we engage with within Indiana. So certainly a standout kind of aha for us as a team. Yeah, we are blessed. I mean, when you look at all the things that happen here to drive this ag bioscience economy, specifically here in Indiana, blessed with incredible leaders from big companies, small companies, government officials, nonprofit organizations, just awesome universities linking arms to drive this critical, essential component of the economy. Amanda, we have time for one more question before we wrap up, and that is, that is a future. And as we look, you know, we, we've, we've kind of pegged where we think the trends are. We've pegged what the quant analysis is of the current establishment. But I want you to zoom way out. Forget Indiana for a moment. Look at the global ag bioscience economy. What's ahead? What are you seeing as the future that we might experience? And where do you see opportunity there? Well, there are many different futures that could play out as we saw sure. in this process. We really tried to kind of make sure that we were not hemming ourselves into to one version of the future. But when I really think about the opportunities that emerged out of this experience, and like you said, you know, they are linked to global trends. Um, although the work was very grounded in the context of Indiana, those are opportunities that really translate across contexts. What's interesting about them, if you think about them side by side, sure. farmer focused innovation, food is health and bioinnovation, the commonality is about innovating at intersections, mm. intersections of non-traditional domains that we have treated fairly separately in the past. And so you're seeing a convergence of disciplines, of organizational structures and collaboration that I think is really going to be the way that we have to operate or should be operating in the future. But that really does call into question, do we have organizations and collaborative structures and incentives that are purpose built for innovating at the intersections? And so as I think about, you know, how Indiana steps into these opportunities, how you all take advantage of them, I think real differentiation starts to come when you all start to kind of experiment with and mature an ability to innovate at the intersections and bring those non-traditional domains together in ways that are much more fluid. And you have professionals who can nimbly kind of move within these spaces that we've often treated as separate. So those are some of the thoughts that I have for the future. They're relevant to Indiana, but I think relevant to a lot of other players in the ag bioscience economy. Beautiful call to action. Beautiful call to action. She is Amanda Rose. Agri-Food Systems Lead at RTI. I mean, it has been awesome to work with you and your team. Thanks for the partnership. Thanks for making it happen. Thank you, Mitch. And as always, you can get this research. I've said this multiple times, but I know you're hearing this. You want to go get it. agrinovisindiana.com slash research. agrinovisindiana.com slash research. Thanks so much for joining us on the Ag Bioscience Podcast. You can always get the latest Ag Bioscience news and insights from discussions just like this online at agrinovisindiana.com. And while there, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast, whether that's in video form or whether that's in audio form, you can get there by clicking on the podcast button and you can check out the events tab and find out where we're going to be on the road. I'm Mitch Frazier on behalf of the entire Agrinovis team saying thanks for listening. We look forward to seeing you real soon. Ag Bioscience is a podcast by Agrinovis Indiana, hosted by Mitch Frazier, produced by Kayla Chittister and Fabian Rodriguez, photography and design by Kaylee Kerr. If you like today's episode, subscribe, rate, and review so we can bring you more conversations just like this. Get all episodes of Ag Bioscience at agrinovisindiana.com. <laughs>